we have finished our blow drying and our curling, we're going to be working into our chemical services. So the first chemical service that we're going to be talking about today is the chemical waving. Now, if you've never wrapped up perm before, this could seem very intimidating to you, but it's actually not that bad. Uh, because you don't have to do the full head, you only have to wrap from the crown to the nape. And that's the set of instructions that you'll be given, is that you're going to be wrapping perms from the crown to the nape. Notice how I put an emphasis on crown to nape. It's because that's the specific order that we're going to be wrapping these perm rods in. It doesn't say nape to crown, crown to nape, so we're going to be going from top to bottom. Now the easiest way to segment the hair out for this is to grab a perm rod and measure the width of the perm rod. Because you don't want that section to be any smaller or any bigger than that section. So you can see here, I'm going to kind of eyeball right about here and create those two segments. And you'll see I'll draw a line straight down. And utilizing a duckbill clip or a butterfly clip, which you'll have in your kit, I'll control the hair. So you can see that's going to be the outside, and I'm going to visualize that line right about there. I'm going to drop that hair from right on there as well. And again, controlling and isolating that hair out of the way. So now I just want to double check my section, make sure that I have a nice panel that I'm going to be working with. And you can see in this case, it is a little bit thin on bottom, so I can add a little bit more hair to the bottom. But up on top, we're doing pretty good. So I'm going to make that minor adjustment here. So pulling hair from the sides where I unintentionally skinnied it out a little bit. And once more, double check what I am working with. And you can see that looks a lot better all the way around. Now again, the section that I said that we were going to be utilizing today is going to be the crown. So all of this hair up on top, I do not need. So I will take this and isolate this off to the side as well. So I have my crown to nape segment. Now what I want to do is I want to utilize the width of this rod. If I were to place this rod right against the head, you can see that it is about a quarter of an inch in width. That is the largest my section should be. So if I pull this over to the side, this, all of this hair should disappear behind my rod. As you can see, it goes in both ways. That is telling me that this is the perfect size for me to wrap this perm. Well, before I wrap this perm, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to wet down the hair. Wetting down the hair is going to give me more control as I go to wrap my perm. And again, just like I did with the blow dryer, I'm going to be combing through the hair as I spray it. And you can see we're isolating the hair in which I'm going to be wrapping. It makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker for me to wet down the hair as well. So I'm going to be utilizing that quarter of an inch section that I was just talking about. And if I'm ever unsure, I can always use that check method where I just drag the hair over and make sure that it all disappears behind that rod. And you can see I'm combing the hair from the base. And I'm also making sure that I'm working at a 90 degree elevation. So just to check where that elevation is, I'll rest the comb against that hair. And you'll see that the hair and the comb come out at the same angle. Now once I've combed out the hair, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this end paper, which I've already pre-folded in half. All I'm going to do is I'm going to slide that end paper right over the top of that hair. I'm going to pull it all the way towards the ends. Now it's really important to make sure that you maintain that tension in the hair because the they're going to be checking for fish hooks, and we want to make sure that we don't have any fish hooks in the hair. Now if the hair is layered, which you should, yours shouldn't be, you can utilize an extra end paper to make sure that those all lay down nice. So 
Now once you have wrapped that nice and tight, you should see that this should go right towards the scalp. And I go to lock this. You're gonna see that if I were to lock it here, this places too much tension on the hair. So I'm going to readjust the bands so that there's a little bit more give. So it's not as tight and there's a little bit more play. It's also important to notice that the elastic that I have closed off doesn't have any twists or turns in it. That creates more tension and could eventually break the hair as well. What your band will look like if you did have twists and turns in them is something along these lines where you can see the very big difference from how I had it in the first place. And because we are wrapping from crown to nape, I'm just going to continue working my way down, still utilizing the same section size of a quarter of an inch. Making sure that I comb from the base, have that 90 degree elevation, and utilize that end paper to secure that hair into my perm rod. Again, making sure that I have that nice tension. I'm pulling that hair all the way towards the end so I don't have any fish hooks and wrapping that in all the way towards the base of the head. And you'll see that I'll continue all the way down into the nape. All right, you can see that I'm wrapping it up here, literally. Coming down to my last perm rod. You can see that as I did my entire segment that nothing's really changed. I made sure to utilize that 90 degree elevation, using the extra end paper where needed to kind of secure the hair inside the perm rod. Now you probably won't actually have to use an extra end paper because you'll have a fresh doll head that you'll be doing all these services on. It just happens that the doll head that I'm utilizing today has a lot of layers on it. Now if we come around to the side, you'll see that all of the elastics line up and none of them look like they're too tight against the head and they all have a little bit of give. You can see the consistency in my section sizes, which you will be graded on. And more importantly, at the end when we pull it out, making sure that we don't have any fish hooks or fish tails. Now that I've finished wrapping the perm from the nape to the crown, I'm going to step back and wait for further instructions. At which point the examiner will come up to me and ask me to apply the perming solution. Well, because there was such a big gap and realistically he doesn't know where I put my hands, I'm gonna go ahead and sanitize my hands and put on my gloves. The reason why I'm going to be utilizing gloves here is because I'm going to be working with a chemical solution. So again, making sure that I'm protecting myself and protecting my client at the same time. Now if you wanted to put your gloves on before the examiner gets to you, that is absolutely okay. I still recommend that you sanitize your hands over the gloves. Now once I have my gloves on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my cotton. and I'm gonna place this cotton around the perm rod. Now 
Now this is not the only way that you can do this. If you wanted to wrap the entire head, so the entire front hairline, you're more than welcome to. But I like just you wrapping around the rods that I have placed. Now before I even apply the perming solution, I need to make sure that I'm protecting against the skin, so I'm gonna be using a protective cream. In this case, my protective cream is a gel base. So I'm gonna grab some of that protective cream off my station. Dispense it onto the back of my hand over the trash. And apply from the mastoid process to the mastoid process. Now, if that's gonna be a little bit too difficult for you to understand, you're more than welcome to apply protective cream all the way around the hairline, including the front. In this case, we're only working with solution in the back, so I'm just going from the mastoid process to the mastoid process. Now, what I like to do is I like to use an extra set of paper towels, so I'm gonna sanitize my hands because I need to go back into my kit, open up my bag, and get an extra piece of paper towel. You'll have an abundance of paper towels in your kit, especially if you do get your kit from Rental Kit. And what I like to do with this paper towel is I like to fold it in half and then some. This is going to make sure that this can hold the most amount of moisture, and most importantly, it's going to be able to slot in between these perm rods. Reason being that when I go to apply this perm solution, I want to make sure that I don't have any drippage or runnage off onto the floor, because then I have to stop my service and clean up after myself. So making sure that the tip of the applicator bottle does not t touch the rod, I'm going to insert my paper towel underneath that rod, and I'm going to work in that Z formation. You can see how that catches all the runoff really, really well. Now the examiner may have you only do one, may have you do two, or the entire segment of perm rods. Just keep saturating the perm rods until he asks you to stop. After he's pleased with what he has seen, he will ask you to demonstrate a test, a check test curl, in which case you will put the solution back onto your station, dispense of the paper towel that you were holding, and pull out a perm rod. You'll see, especially in this first one that I saturated, that it does not look light compared to the rest of my perm rods. This is demonstrating very thorough and nice saturation. You want to make sure that you are saturating the entire rod. Now what you're going to see here is I'm going to pull out the hair about one and a half times, I'm going to be bracing against the back here, and I'm just going to slightly push in. What we want to see is that nice C-shape or S-shape pattern inside the hair, and then you can roll that up and close it up. Again, he may have you check one, he may have you check two. It just really depends. At which point, the examiner will ask you to move aside, and we'll check for fish hooks and fish tails. And this is what that would look like. You take out the rod, pull it out, and you can see that I had a very small fish tail here, which would result in uh, a little subtraction of points. But here towards the ends, you can see that it went all the way straight through towards the ends, which looks good. And again, that is just the challenge of the doll head that I'm working with today with the layers. Once he has checked your perm rods, he will either ask you to take out your perm rods or just ask you to wait patiently. Again, it's very important that you listen for further instructions and you wait to do what you're instructed.